again and welcome back to the Mirror Football Podcast. Uh, I'm Ian Cruz and with me around the table this week are 3pm funny man Steve Anglesey, Daily Mirror Football reporter Darren Lewis and the People's Chief Sports Writer Dave Kidd. There really is only one topic we can start with this week and that of course is John Terry. Uh, I don't feel we need to go into the, how should we say, ins and outs of the story here. Uh, Dave, straight to you, what do you make of the whole affair? I think um, it's, it's certainly Capello's um, hardest decision to date. Um, I, I personally, um, I, I think that, that if Capello chooses to, to strip Terry of the captaincy, then he's going to face an extremely difficult decision as to who to replace him with. If you start making the England captaincy um, a, a question of morality, then there aren't very many candidates who have any sort of morals in that dressing room. Um, you go through all of the experienced candidates without spelling them out for any legal reasons, then they've all been on the front pages of newspapers for the wrong reasons in their time, some for a greater extent than others. But if you start going down that road, then I don't really know where you draw the line. But Darren, is it right that JT should keep them in captaincy because basically they're all as bad as one another? Well, I slightly disagree with Dave in so much as if John Terry didn't have the captaincy, then... When Capello took over, he he said that everything was everyone had started on a clean slate, and that everything everyone had done before he'd taken over, he was going to put to one side. So on that basis, it wouldn't be a problem for him to give it to anyone else. As we all know, he deliberated between Terry and Rio Ferdinand anyway early on. That's only if you think that that they've all been whiter than white in the last two years, and as soon as then we soon as soon as then we realise that. Maybe they haven't been. Then are they going to get mm. stripped of the captaincy as well? On where do you draw the line? Yeah, but uh, you end up with Daniel Heskey as captain. <laughs> well, yeah. to be fair. But for example, that there's nothing to say that he couldn't have Rooney, for example, as a captain. I know people say it will take a lot away from his game, and they're probably right. Or Gareth Barry, maybe as, as captain. Um, but the, I, I think the idea that you couldn't have anyone else because they're all as bad as each other, I'm not quite sure. I, I certainly don't go along with that. I would say that the majority of the people want Terry to remain in his position, and we have to recognise that. We have to recognise. Is that, that the majority of the people within the game, or the majority of the great unwashed? No, I mean, you know, when you look at the 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 people who have emailed into Mirror Sport, into Mirror Football, when you look at people who are getting in touch with the phone-ins, uh, I've had emails myself from people who say. Leave him alone. It's it. They don't regard it to be a football issue, even though, obviously, some of us do. Uh, but you have to recognise that there is a groundswell of opinion that suggests that he should stay in the role. Be it a football issue or not, it's it's a trust issue, isn't it? I mean, Steve, the the, the infidelity is one thing, but you know, to to cheat with your but is that our business? Is that our, that, well, is that, is whether, that really whether, our business? whether or not it is, Darren? You know, the England captain. It, it's it's a very important role. You know, whether we like it or not. It's a huge, it's a huge year for England. He's a huge figurehead of that team. It clearly is a big public issue because it's all over the papers, as we all know. I mean, Steve, I just want to get your your feelings on on the whole situation. Well, um, I'm, obviously, I'm conflicted by it because I think John Terry's a great player, and he, I, I think he he has been a, a good captain for England. I think, however, that the minute you you can't pick one player for a team because another player of more senior rank has been diddling his missus, I think that's a very sad state of affairs. Um, and, um, and I think that's, that's the position that Wayne Bridge is in. And I find it quite, I don't think Wayne Bridge has played particularly well this season for Manchester City. Um, and uh, I don't think he would be an automatic first choice, certainly. And I th- but I do, I do think that the fact that we're scratching around now saying, well, maybe Stephen Warnock could come in, maybe this bloke and that bloke could come in, is extremely demeaning when it's when it is when, if, if if it was any player, never mind the captain of England. I also think that this story should be over by now, and and that the I think Fabio Capello made a, a terrible mistake when he appointed John Terry as captain. I think everybody everybody in the game knew that John Terry had some sort of rick in him, so it's been proved. Parking in the disabled bay for me is is as bad or, or worse than 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 this particularly. Uh, there's the, 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 been the, the touting of, of himself as England captain around various potential sponsors, which I find very unseemly. The, uh, the, the signing up of, uh, with, with a, a newspaper, uh, I also don't think is right for an England captain and wouldn't have gone on under previous administrations. 
But I really think that this story should be over, uh, should be over by now. We're, we're into the, the nearly a week of this now, and I think the FA, in the absence of Fabio Capello, should have either made the choice for him or told him he should have made the choice earlier. I mean, personally, I, I think the, the right choice would be to not have John Terry as, as captain. We, I mean, we all know what footballers are like. We've all been around training grounds over the years. I mean, you know, Boys with Boys is a very, is a very kind of manly humour about football changes. I mean, Dave, do you think this will be kind of just laughed about in change rooms over this weekend, or has been this week and will then be forgotten about? I think it might have been laughed about in, in, in other dressing rooms, not not at Chelsea and not by the England players. I think the fact that when this slightly silly uh, Team Bridge t-shirts are being worn by the, the few of the foreign players and or non-English players at, uh, at Manchester City. Um, you know, I, th I think, um, I think that was all a bit, I thought that was all a bit, a bit bizarre to be honest. Um, it kind of gave a bit more life to it, didn't it? Yeah, it did, yeah, absolutely. I must point out, Bridge t-shirts are available on Miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Very high quality <laughs> yeah, for, a very, uh, for a low, low price. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it, did, it gave it a little it, extra. It gave it that life, but at the same time, it was all very Jordan and Peter Andre. And that, that yeah, yeah. It, it, it added that it almost was, comedic was element to a serious issue, really. And, and, and that Tevez doesn't even speak problem. English, does he? <laughs> no, he, he probably doesn't know. <laughs> it's okay, we've never spoken to Wayne Bridge about yeah, the he, situation. I mean, no. But I mean, coming back to the coming back to the football mm. issue, I mean John Terry, England captain, Fabio Capello and John Fabio Capello, excuse me, and John Terry are going to speak later on on Friday. After that, possibly after the Euro 2012 draw on Sunday, we're going to hear that. I mean, Darren, should he stay as England captain? I mean, a, let's make it a football issue. Should he stay as England captain? If you were to go by the, the respect he garners in the dressing room and the response of the people, then you'd have to say yes. And you, you don't think that respect will have been watered down in any way by the events of the last week? No, because while we outside of the England dressing room uh, regard the England captain and the, the position, not John Terry, but we regard the, the position of England captain as one of being a role model. And this, there's loads of guff about it is, it's not a role model, but... If you look at the amount of children who buy shirts and have specific names put on the back, we ourselves argue so many times about the impact of what players do of an evening uh, on, 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 on the TV highlight show and how children respond to that on the parks, in schools, uh, by day. Then quite clearly we're operating on double standards if we say that. You know, it, it's not a, you're not a role model if you become the England captain because it's not it's just not true. Can I can I say that I think that, that captaincy in football is is, is is totally overestimated. I agree with you. Yeah. And, and and the fact is nobody has nobody has suggested seriously that Terry should not be in the England squad. No. no. Right. So, so that seems to be accepted that Terry should still for what, in whichever moral way you're looking at it. Mm. Right. Everyone seems to say that Terry. No one no one is seriously saying Terry should not be in the squad. So Terry will be in the squad. Terry is Terry, therefore he will have a forceful personality in that dressing room. He will be a leader. Mm. Whoever you put an armband on, Terry will still be a, a forceful personality within that dressing room. I Whether totally he's got an armband agree. on, it's, it's, it's really all awesome semantics. But, but having said that... He's going to be there and Bridget's going to be there. But having said that, for decades, not years, mm. decades, we have set a lot of store by the position of England captain. It's a figure, yeah, it's, it's a an, leader, it's, it's a English symbol. Thing. Capello, it's a very Capello, much Capello, an English thing, Capello's yes. Capello's really rather baffled by it. Yeah, honest. exactly, but... Which is probably why he hasn't rushed back. He, he, he's not he, he's not like McLaren in particular, or other English England managers. He's not swayed by the media, he doesn't care mm. what we're saying. He doesn't, he doesn't care what's in the newspapers. Other people in the FA certainly do. They, they jump up and down about it, but Capello couldn't care But less. this is the thing, I mean, we're... we're really, I don't think he really almost, cares all that much about the captain. But we as a newspaper, we're almost hypocritical if we start saying that it, the England captain doesn't mean anything. When, when somebody is named the England captain, we devote pages and pages to it. They hold, they're, they're seen holding the cross of, of St George on, on the day of a game. You know, they, they're, they're the ones who give the press conference. That's, that's they the are the ones, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and On the you, know, we, you know, we dig out all of their history, and you know, it started here, it ends here. You know, they've reached the pinnacle of their profession. Suddenly now, it, it's a difficult one for us. And you know, you have to. There was something quite funny about the fact that we're leaving it to an Italian to make a decision hmm. because we as Englishmen haven't got the, 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 the balls for, for no, one we, of the better words if, we, if, we, if, we, if, if we're going to appoint this Italian he is the and manager, pay six he? million pounds a year and he's got well, to make that decision well to an extent he does have to make that decision but there's nothing wrong with the FA actually uh, 
giving their point of view and to coming out and there's saying no one, where they there's stand. No one, there. There's no one inside the FA with any great right. strength. Capello's got a very mm. strong personality. There's, there's not any any of the Blazers. Capello wouldn't allow that clear. decision to be taken out of his hands. I mean, as no, he, no one's saying that. it should be taken out of his hands. I'm not saying that at all. I'm, but I'm saying there's nothing wrong with people coming out and saying this is where we stand. And certainly if the FA, uh, uh, they go on about football being this great force for change and you see all these projects that they, they come up with in all these different countries and places and schools and whatever else, and suddenly we've got this issue and we're leaving it to an Italian to give his view on the matter because we as Englishmen at the highest level can't do it. Oh, well, I think, let, let I think this, is, this, is, this is absolute, this goes to the, this goes to the, the, the crux of the matter really, I, I think, I, I, uh, exactly what you've said. And I think, you know, there's, there's, a, and there's American football game being played at the weekend, the Super Bowl, um, and you look at, look at John Terry and look at him against Drew Brees, who's the quarterback of the New Orleans Saints. Now, we know that, as Dave has said correctly, captain, the issue of the captaincy is, is a very much an England thing. We set a lot of store by our captain. He's the moral leader of the country for some reason, even though he's a 20-odd-year-old kid who's, who's probably not <coughs> had the greatest background whatever. But here's a guy, Drew Brees, who's gone to, he's, he's joined New Orleans just after Hurricane Katrina, he's driven around, seen the incredible devastation and the suffering that those people have, 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 um, have, have had put upon them by corrupt local governments, don't care, na national governments, ab absolute disgrace what's happened in New Orleans. And Drew Brees driven around and instead of saying, well, I could do this and that and I'll put, give some of my salary to charity, he has said, well, this starts with the kids. So he, for the last two or three years, he's set up an incredible foundation. They've raised, I think, two or two and a half million dollars. He's setting up, rebuilding and setting up new schools, new programs for kids all around there. And that's the kind that's of guy. That's example. the kind of guy that I would want mm. to be the, the, the captain of my country. You know, where, where is he in the England dressing room? David James may have been this about it. David, yeah. Well, I think you know. I mean, you'd say David James, he's, but you, you would say that, that Rio's got those kind of tendencies. But again, Rio, you know, maybe also has a rick in him. I, I, I don't know, and I do agree that the captaincy thing is is overrated. But then again, you're talking about a point. A captain for a different reason other than what he does or doesn't do on the pitch. But, anyway, but, 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 what, but, I want to ask the three of you before we move on because we need to move on to something different. One word answer from each of the three of you. When Fabio Capello meets John Terry later on Friday afternoon, should the upshot of that meeting be that John Terry stays as England captain, Steve, yes or no? Uh, the upshot should be that he doesn't stay, no. But Darren, he, he will stay. I think yes. Dave? Yes, yes. Right. I mean, Back to matters on the pitch, fortunately for all of us, and John Terry will be involved in you know, the big game of the weekend, which takes place at Stamford Bridge on Sunday afternoon when Chelsea host Arsenal. Um, in a match that, you know, I think we were having this conversation three or four weeks ago when Arsenal were about to take the field. If they lose this one, they're out of the title race. Darren, if they lose this one, are they out of the title race? I keep putting up the stat from last year. Man United, they beat one team in the top four and still went on to win the title. It's about consistency. Um, I wrote a piece last week mentioning that very same stat and lo and behold Chelsea go to Hull and drop two points on Wednesday. The games against the big teams are fascinating, exciting and they'll be a good watch but at the end of the day I, I think they matter less, particularly in this season where teams in the top five, six are all dropping points because the teams behind them are, are, are getting stronger all the time. Your, your Birmingham's, your Aston Villas, your, your, your Tottenham Hotspurs, uh, who are all gaining ground in the top four. Um, so I think it would not be the end of the world if Arsenal were to lose on Sunday. Right, I mean, it will open up a fairly significant gap, though, won't it? I mean, Dave, the game last weekend between Arsenal and Manchester United looked for all the world like Manchester United's men against Arsenal's boys. I mean, Chelsea, have, uh, Chelsea are unquestionably bigger, stronger and more powerful than United as a, as a team and as a squad. I mean, can Arsenal actually go there and, and derail Chelsea? I think Arsenal could. I don't think they will win the title. I think he needed to buy in January and he, he needed to make, I think he needed to, to buy a goal scorer. And I think he needed to buy a goalkeeper. And he didn't do either. Uh, it's, not easy to, it's not easy to buy in January. He certainly tried to look for a goal scorer. Chamak in particular, and apparently David Villa as well. But the fact that he hasn't done so, I just don't think they've got enough there. Um, I, th I think they could go and win at Chelsea. They're that sort of team. They could do Arshavin and Fabregas and or Fabregas. Both of them could have blinders and they could win that game. But I don't think they're going to... I don't think 
I just don't think they've got enough. They've not got as much as Chelsea or Manchester United squad wise. Can I just ask you, David, if you say that he should have bought these players, <coughs> uh, then you've got a big squad, unhappy players, because obviously you, know, you can only ever field 11 players. Isn't he better to stick with the players that he's got? He's had we, a lot of faith in them already and they've taken him into the title race. Isn't he better El off Mo- sticking El with Mooney them? is not good enough, is he? No, he's, he's not, he's good, not good, enough. good enough. And, and, and the other keepers there are young and Mark Manoni looked quite decent when I saw him once early in the season. I don't know, I haven't seen enough of him. Um, and in terms of an out-and-out goal scorer, he doesn't, he doesn't, he's never really trusted or he's never found the right out-and-out goal scorer, maybe. But they really do, without Van Persie, they really do lack that. I mean, Arshavin's a terrific player. Love watching Arshavin, but he's not a, a lone striker, which is effectively what he's been asked to do. You can't, see, I mean, you, you can't really right see Bentner making Bentner's much of him. He's, he's, I don't think he really is. It's just not they, they don't go out, Arsenal scoring. don't go out breaking the bank. And I mean, last week we talked about finances in football and Liverpool are struggling and Manchester, yeah. the two biggest clubs in, in, in the country. And yet Arsenal, they, they're in rude health financially and they're up there challenging. And I just think, that's because of Arsene Wenger's patience. And we all bang on about he should spend this money and get the David Villa. But the David Villa has cost £40 million. I don't there's think there's no... any doubt that that's right, Darren. But, I mean, you know, this will, assuming they don't win the Premier League, that leaves in the Champions League to fight for this season, which is going to be a very, very difficult competition to win and probably a bit too difficult. I mean, Steve, this will be five years without yeah. a trophy. I, I mean, I is, is pretty football and money in the bank enough to appease Arsenal well, fans? I, I, don't, I, I don't think it, I, don't, I really don't think it is. And I don't know, I don't really understand, I'm, I'm scratching my head about what his strategy is. And, and is, it to, is it to hang on until Platini brings in some kind of, you know, rules about how much you can spend as, as against the, the, the gross um, turnover of your club. Now, we, is he really hanging on for, for that in 2012 or 2013? Till this is all realistic. Till this might actually happen. Exactly. To this, to the for this great vision of his to be vindicated. I, you know, there's, there there aren't any prizes given yeah. out for the best run club at the end of the season. No. It, and, it, and, and as Dave says, I, ju- I think it really is as simple as that, isn't it? We've known for a long time that the goalkeeper's not good enough. And we've known for a long time that they need a big striker. And, and also, I, I appreciate what, what Darren is saying about staying loyal to the, you know, dancing to the guys who brought you and dancing with the guys who brought you and everything. But I think that, that something that's very underestimated in football is how players can improve when they're under serious competition for places. You, you and that about, they don't have at Arsenal. He talked about patience, but is Fabregas going to keep being patient? I don't think he will be. Uh, you know, Fabregas's patience is only going to last so long, and therefore, so is there ever is tomorrow ever going to come for Arsenal? You know, is this bright tomorrow ever going to come? I mean, I, I, I take the point of both what you're saying, but I just think as journalists, sometimes we want it both ways. We criticise uh, Manchester United and Liverpool for being in so much debt. And, and, and yet we're saying Arsenal should go and push the boat out and buy big name players and Arsene Wenger is saying well no I'm going to have patience with the players that I've invested time and money in over a significant amount of years I remember uh, Nicolas Anelka's first couple of years and he couldn't hit a barn door with a banjo but he know. did have look who he had around him at the time you know oh, they, had a team of, they had a team of big old bruises around them which well, he not did, but he now. didn't improve significantly on those big old bruises the only players he brought into that side were Petit and Vieira as, as I recall that's he right. didn't buy too many other He didn't players. buy them, but he had them there already. He had, there, good, he had a good basis already to work from, didn't I he? still think that, it, you know, if you look at, for example, the, the France not team that won the European Championship, an excellent side, but up front, who do they have? Stefan Givash and, and, and yeah, somebody who was... Yeah, yeah they were, it was a shocking pair yeah. of strikers. And so I don't think good players around, in, around you necessarily make you... No, players. but you know what? It's I'd, faith that he has. You know, there's, there's one thing I thought while I was I, th- I thought of this while I was watching him last week a, a, against um, against United, and it was in the in the seventies when when Saturday Night Live came out in the seventies. They had Chevy Chase and all this. They had this great team: John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, and they they were that, that team was comically built. There was a there was a rival thing on a rival show, and they were billed as the prime time players. And the Saturday Night Live cast were billed as the not quite ready for prime time players, <laughs> right? And that was then taken up by the Dallas Cowboys, who'd been a great team, yeah. but were not quite ready. And that is Arsenal for me. And mm. it's season after season, they are the not quite ready for prime time players. Talk, I mean, another team of perhaps not quite ready to to win it. Well, don't look like they're going to win anything this season. Certainly not. Um, and let's see how Steve managed to turn this to American popular culture. Um, 
Obviously, we have the Merseyside derby on Saturday lunchtime. Another <clears> manager, <throat> another team under pressure, Liverpool. Um, I mean, if you know Darren, you're a Liverpool fan. Big game against their local rivals who are moving, certainly moving in the right direction on the start of the season. Could this game almost make or break Liverpool season? In a scarce accent. <laughs> Um, no, I, I don't think make or break. I mean, they're on a good run. They've, 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 they've obviously been through their blip. I think they're a point behind Spurs at the moment. I might be wrong. But I know both teams go into this game in very good form. I know that Everton obviously were, were, were bundled out of the, of the uh, FA Cup the other day. But in the league, they're doing a lot better. Tim Cahill scoring more goals from midfield. Uh, Billy Letdinoff looks a fantastic signing on the left side and Landon Donovan probably the signing of the January transfer window mm. uh, the USA uh, forward and I think he could be the difference in the match on on Saturday uh, because Everton they, they look a very solid solid well balanced side and I think Liverpool for all the players they've got as you you know my feeling I still feel they rely too much on the brilliance of Torres and Steven Gerrard from midfield it's a close one to call but I think I think Liverpool might just edge it. I mean, Steve, you're a, you're a Man City fan, obviously, so you'd be looking, I guess, for, for Everton to do your boys a favour at the weekend. I mean, we've, still, we've talked about Liverpool being over reliant on Terra, Terra, sorry, excuse me, Torres and Gerrard. Are they another? I mean, they didn't have any money in the January transfer window, but are they another team? Liverpool who are going to come up a bit short come May. Well, yeah. I mean, I, 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 Darren says that says Liverpool are in good form, and I, I don't think that's absolutely. I don't think that's right. I think they've had a good run of results, but I don't think any of them have been really convincing in any of those games. I, I don't know. But you said before about Arsenal. You don't get much for artistic impression. It's yeah, a result. That's right. No, and they, they have. They have, That's true. And they have. They have ground it out. I mean, they've. And they're, and they're doing it without Stephen Gerrard being really. I mean, he's not fit, is he? No. he he's just, no. he's just not right. And you, you do worry about what the knock-on effect is, whether he, he's going to play himself right or whether he's going to play himself into an injury that's really costly for the for the summer. Um, it's a really interesting game, this. I think. I, I, you know, I absolutely take Darren's point about um, Landon Donovan, and uh, I think he's, you know, Everton. Uh, I think pound for pound. You'd have to say, wouldn't you, that, that Moyes has, has done a lot better with his resources than Rafa has done with his resources. Don't mean he's a better manager, but no. in the transfer market, better for Lane's, I was just going to pose pretty much the same question to David. I mean, for the first time in probably a long time, when we look at the two team sheets on Saturday lunchtime, I think actually on paper, Evans is quite a bit stronger. Possibly, yeah. I, I, I think Moyes is over many years. Moyes, if you, if you if you actually looked at the value for money of Moyes' signings as opposed to. Benitez, there's no, no contest. He's oh, people like Tim Cahill, you know, from from Millwall, and it's fantastic Premier League, consistent Premier League performer. Eight hundred thousand pound. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, I, I think, think so. Yeah. Maybe a couple of million, so. but that wasn't a lot. And players like that, uh, Jackie Elkhorn has been injured. A terrific signing from the lower divisions. Other people haven't taken a punt on him. And and Lennon Donovan, as Darren says, I've seen him a couple of times. Been excellent. Mm. Um, don't see Benitez making those sort of signings, do you? I mean, you lots of nondescript Spaniards that don't really ever seem to do an awful lot. Yeah, he's, never, he's not really pulled, I can't think to of one that he's pulled out of a hat. I mean, Torres, obviously, everyone looked at him. And he but took everyone knew yeah, his quality. Everyone knew Torres was quality, yeah, absolutely. It's interesting, isn't it, because uh, the, last week in the transfer market, uh, the word was coming out of Liverpool that he was looking for another right-back. Now, if you go through the right-backs, his hands are far <laughs> below a Josemi. You know, to, he's got bought, spent seventeen million pounds on Glenn Johnson last year, and suddenly he wants when when many people thought he should have bought another striker, mm -hmm. suddenly he wants another right back. And you have you know lots of midfielders, lots of left backs. Your Deggans, your, your John Arnarisas. Uh, he let Warnock go, and Warnock's an asset now to Aston yeah, Villa. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have to like you both have said. I totally agree. His dealings in the transfer market not good enough. Uh, well, there will be lots of questions answered this weekend, both on the England captaincy and the perhaps ultimate destination of the Premier League title. Uh, just before we close this week, briefly, it's time for Hero and Villain of the Week. Uh, Steve, let's start with you, please. Well, the villain's going to be easy, isn't it? <laughs> um, I think uh, the Hero of the Week, I think, is... I, just, I think the last couple of games that I've, that I've seen of him... Um, I think David Bentley has been absolutely sensational. He was t uh, terrific against Leeds. I know it's a, uh, you know it's against reduced uh, opposition, but I think he's you know the way that he's come back into it, it probably is too late for him, barring a, a couple of injuries. You know, 
but I think he, he he's has really really been very impressive for somebody that whose career just seemed to be petering out completely. Uh, and then and the, the, the villain of the week, as I said before, uh, not John Terry specifically, but I just think the FA have handled this really badly. This story should have been over by now, and you know, and it should instead it's been allowed to run and run. Darren. I agree with Steve as far as the, the John Terry situation is concerned. If Fabio Capello makes a decision towards the back end of the weekend, then we're going we're gonna to be going into a second week of John Terry when we should have forgotten it a long time ago. Uh, as for a hero, I'm going to say Jermaine Defoe because I thought that was a brilliant hat-trick that he put away against Leeds to put the Spurs uh, into the next round of the FA Cup. Uh, so I'm going to go for Defoe. And finally, Dave? The villain, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to uh, disagree about Terry. Um, my hero was, was um, Danny Butterfield of Crystal Palace, who, having scored only once in six years, then scored three times in six minutes to, to, to beat a Premier League team in the Cup in the week they've gone into administration, and then was asked about you know, how he felt about this momentous um, achievement. And, and, and he replied, I haven't stopped laughing yet. And I thought, what a great reply for a team you know, who are in administration. And, and you know we'll we will end up sort of speaking far too much about finance and not enough about football in, in, anymore in our in our game and and um, and Butterfield just thought it was all terribly funny and I thought well great he's just enjoying himself well don't we? Well that's a very positive note on which to <laughs> end a, a troubled week for some of our nation's players. Uh, thanks gentlemen for a, another fascinating chat and we'll see you next week. Yeah.